Research has recently revealed 10 powerful strategies for programmer learning. Unlike computers that process information linearly, human minds learn in a dynamic, cyclical way. And understanding this key difference may be fundamental to maximizing the learning journey of future computer scientists for generations to come. Join us as we speak with Lauren Margelo at Georgia State University to discuss 10 things software developers should learn about learning. The purpose of the paper is to translate education and cognitive science research for people in the computer science field so that they can learn more effectively and efficiently. The difference between how experts and beginners solve problems has important implications for teaching because beginners have a lot of cognitive processing that's going on when they're working on a problem. So it's really important when teaching to point out what these salient features are and help them to distinguish between what's a superficial detail of this problem and what's an important structural detail of how you solve problems. Navigating problem solving, educators help learners spot key details in a balanced cycle with both concrete and abstract elements. The general learning cycle is that you go between abstract and concrete examples. So you want to start with concrete examples that you can understand and really wrap your head around and then understand how those abstract away to solve multiple types of examples. However, when you start looking at multiple types of examples, you have to go back to the concrete examples to make sure that you are thinking of all the edge cases and all the unique situations that would make that abstract concept apply or not apply. So what actually makes you a good programmer? Is it innate skill or is it honing expertise through practice? Researchers say it may not be entirely either. There's two views of whether someone will ultimately be good at programming. The aptitude view says that someone's either born with it or they're not. And you can't really change whether you're going to be a good programmer. But then the practice view says that anyone with enough time and effort can be good at programming. And really neither of these two views are true on their own. So it's true that with enough practice, anyone could pass an intro programming class. However, it's also true that practically no one is going to be a good enough computer scientist that they're going to win a Turing award. When confronted with a task that appears challenging, it's crucial to acknowledge that its difficulty can be altered. Some of the best ways to support learning is to help learners break down tasks into smaller pieces. Because usually if you're struggling with learning, you're having trouble with that decomposition of the problem into pieces that you understand or that you can process. In the digital age, online resources don't make expertise obsolete, as prior experience is crucial for expert problem-solving skills. So the internet or AI tools have not made learning obsolete because you need this prior experience to be able to solve problems well. Just because a solution is available on the internet and just because you can find it doesn't mean that you are being able to process problems in a way at an expert level just because you have that information available. As research continues, and more within computer science take notice, what does the future hold? What I'm excited about for the future is that we keep understanding learning better, and therefore we can apply this to help people learn more effectively and efficiently, both in the classroom and to help learners help themselves learn after they're on the job. Find out more in 10 Things Software Developers Should Learn About Learning, a research article in the January 2024 Communications of the ACM.